What's up everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we're going to talk about something that I have coined, I don't know if I've made this term up or if I heard it somewhere, but it's a term that I use and before all the science freaks get butt hurt that there's no such thing, I call it metabolic momentum. Okay, And I'm sure there's some kind of scientific explanation for it or some kind of big science name for it, but it's got a nice ring to it to me, metabolic momentum, it kind of rhymes. And it explains what it is just by what it's called. Now, once your metabolism gets going, it has a tendency to go in that direction and stay going in that direction, unless you do something drastic to fuck it up and stop it. Now that counts for bulking and cutting both. So what happens a lot of times are people decide they're gonna start a cutting diet and they decide, okay, on Monday morning I start my diet, it's 2,500 calories, now mind you, they've been eating 4,000. 2,500 calories, I'm going to do two hours of cardio, and what happens is they've been bulking for six months. They start that, that program on Monday. Now, all of a sudden, you don't start losing fat on Monday. It takes a while for your body to switch gears and start burning fat. So even the first week, sometimes it doesn't even start burning fat. You lose a couple pounds of water, but you're definitely not burning whole big amounts of fat. So now, hang on a second, Bruno's over here making noise. So now what happens is they say, well, shit, I'm not losing any weight. They restrict their calories more. They put more cardio out. And what happens is now, instead of turning around and burning fat, they go extremely catabolic and wind up losing muscle, flattening out and saying, this fucking sucks and going off their diet. That is a bad transition phase as far as getting ready to do your diet. If you're dieting down for a contest and you've done it properly, your metabolism at the end of your diet should be screaming. And I know some of you science wing nuts are like, that doesn't happen. Your metabolism slows down as you get leaner. How the fuck do you figure that? The way you get leaner is by speeding up your metabolism. You think that fat just gets burned for the fuck of it? Fat is stored in case you're dying. In which case, you are not dying. So what happens is your body's metabolism speeds up to the point where it cannot keep up with breaking down muscle tissue and using those carbohydrates and it needs another source of energy. So it accesses the fat. It's by speeding up your metabolism. That's why very lean people, everybody knows that one kid in high school who only weighed 120 pounds and ate McDonald's every day, never worked out and was ripped to shreds. Why the fuck was his metabolism so fast and he was eating like three or 4,000 calories at 120 pounds and you were 180 pounds and couldn't eat 1,500 calories because you get fat because you had a slower metabolism than a smaller guy. Lean body mass does have something to do with it, but you can be small and have a fast metabolism. You know, like Matt Ogus does have a fast metabolism. I don't give, anybody, give a shit what anybody says. Most of the guys on 3DMJ do have fast metabolisms. They stay fairly lean throughout the year without really trying. You eat all kinds of shitty foods and they stay lean. That is a fast metabolism. Now, you do the same thing to Dorian Yates, who arguably has a pretty good metabolism, and feed him all those shitty foods like that, he's going to get fat. So, obviously, there's a difference in metabolisms and how fast they are. Now, getting back to the metabolic momentum, when I died in 2006, I used that junk load for the weekends. Now, on, so I carb cycled Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 80 grams of carbs, 200 grams of carbs on Thursday, Friday back to 80, Saturday was almost no carbs, which was just protein shakes, and then I would eat junk for 24 hours. And my first meal, because I would get up late, was McDonald's, two Big Mac extra value meals, that's 2,500 calories for one meal. And then after that, what I would do is drive back home and use the bathroom because I had to go to the bathroom and I don't like to use McDonald's bathroom. Then go to like Taco Bell and eat again. And then we'd go to the mall or whatever. I'd eat whatever at the mall. Then we'd go to a restaurant. I mean, I was eating about six or 8,000 calories a day on a diet. And this is legitimately for 10, 12 weeks. Now, technically, my body should have shut down, switched gears with that many calories and stored fat. But here's the great part. By the time midnight came, my stomach looked like a watermelon. Like I couldn't even lay down without it sticking up. I couldn't even see the TV when I was laying down. And when I wake up in the morning, my stomach would be flat as a board. And there were days where I woke up lighter. Even all that food still in my system, lighter than when I went to bed. How the fuck that happens? I don't know. And I'd be hungry as shit the next day. And I'd be dropping weight like crazy, even though I was eating 8,000 calories a day before. I'd go back to my carb cycling because the metabolism had the momentum. It was, it was fat burning, it was going. So when I shoved all those calories and shit into it, it was almost like putting gasoline on a fire. If you throw gasoline on the fire, you'll see it burn up, correct? Well, that's exactly what it was like. When I pulled the calories back down, 
to my carb cycling, it stayed going that way for a couple of days and then it would slow down a little bit back to where I had my carbs for the carb cycling again. By the time it was starting to level out and go back then again, the next week I would do it again. So it was like hitting the gas in your car and taking off and taking your foot off the gas and kind of just coasting. Then hitting the gas again and then coasting. That coasting part is momentum. You're already going in that direction. You're not being pushed anymore. You're just being going straight on a straight line that you've thrusted yourself on that you stay on. And that's what metabolic momentum is. In knowing how to use metabolic momentum, when to refeed, when to pull back on carbs, when to add protein, when to add or pull fats, all of that comes into play with your cardio and your training to get the desired effect that you want to get leaner or to get bigger. It depends on what you're trying to do. But the bottom line is it exists. And whether or not there's a scientific super name for it, I'm sure, sure as shit, I'm sitting in front of you guys right now. There's going to be some wingnut science guy who's like, that's bullshit and you don't, you don't understand physics and you don't, because you don't understand it does not mean it doesn't exist. You probably don't fucking understand rocket science, do you? No. Do you understand how fucking ghosts live outside the body? No. But that doesn't mean they don't fucking exist. That doesn't mean that fucking rocket science doesn't exist because you don't understand it. Bottom line is, the stuff is there. It works. Using it to your advantage is the best and optimal way to get to where you need to go. And this is what it's all about. The optimal way. Okay, why would you want to diet for 42 weeks? Which one of these guys died on? 42 weeks. So you can have that little bit of ice cream at the end of the day. When you can diet for 10 weeks and get the same fucking results. Using metabolic momentum and clean foods. Think about it. Which one is more optimal? Which one would you rather do? 42 weeks or 10 weeks? Me, I'm taking the 10 every time. Biosutraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, www.biosutraining.com is the blog, and we're out.